Hi friends, welcome to another study. So for this presentation, we're gonna be looking at something that is often uttered in Seventh-day Adventist Sabbath School classes, which is the only thing that we take to heaven is our character. Well, is that sentiment really biblical? Stay tuned to find out. So let's jump into our theme verses now. And the idea here is if we keep on repeating non-biblical lies, at some point that gets incorporated as part of our doctrine and our belief system. So that is the essence of what tradition is. And it says in Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks, so is he. Romans 1, 22, professing to be wise, they became fools and they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. Isaiah 23, 13, therefore the Lord said, inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men. So let's go into the New Testament and see how Jesus approaches this very passage of Scripture. Mark 7, 6, He answered and said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandment of God and hold the tradition traditions of men, the washing of pitchers and cups, and many such things you do. So in order to evaluate that premise, we need to actually take a look at our character and be objective. So the question here is, what part of my character or personality is without sin? Romans 3, 21, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So there is no perfection absent Christ anywhere in humanity. But what about inside of me? Romans 7, 18, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For the will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. Isaiah 64, 6, but we all are as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Romans 7, 4, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. I cannot keep the law, and that is why I need Christ. There is not a single part of me or my personality that is good only God is good. So let's dig a little bit deeper on that principle of taking some of my character to heaven with me. So that means that I can keep my character and have Jesus's mind as well. So that means that salvation is a joint effort between me and Jesus. And that means, of course, that God is my co-pilot, as the bumper sticker says. And as it is frequently mentioned in Seventh-day Adventist churches, he helps me keep the law. But is that biblical? Matthew 12, 24, But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. So if I am 99% Christ and 1% my own character with all of its flaws and defects, then that is a house divided against itself and it will not stand in the day of judgment. 2 Corinthians 6, 14, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Paul is applying this corporately, but we can apply it personally too. For what fellowship or communion has righteousness with lawlessness? And we know from 1 John 3, 4, all sin is lawlessness and I am sinful. What communion has light with darkness, and what accord has Christ with Belial, the lord of the forest? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever, and what agreement has the temple of God with idol worship? So as a related question, didn't Lucifer also have a desire to be like God without dying to self? Isaiah 14, 13, For you have said in your heart, I will send into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars or the angels of God, I will sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. So now let's take that basic principle and compare it to the doctrine of the new covenant. So as Paul writes about the new man who is Christ in you, he can't dwell alongside the old man, which is selfish, fleshly me. So then salvation is not a combination of the old man together with the new. 
that is not possible. So the same also applies to the old wine and the new wineskins. So the old wine is the old covenant, which has a different focus. It is what I can do, but the new covenant focuses on the grace of Christ, which is what he does. Ephesians 4, 21, if indeed you've heard him and have been taught by him as a truth is in Christ Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man who grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man. Again, you cannot put on the new man until the old man has been put off through faith in Jesus Christ. Colossians 3, 1, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above which Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Matthew 9, 16, no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment for the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins or else the wineskins break. The wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined but they put new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved. So for the final slide, friends, we're gonna be talking about the sanctification process, which is really what the underlying issue is when we talk about my character versus the character of Christ. So what is sanctification? If you wanna know really simply, it is John 3 verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. And we also need, when we talk about sanctification, to look at Leviticus 20, verse 8. It is I, the Lord God, who sanctify you. So justification is his work. Sanctification is his work as well. As the great high priest, we do not sanctify ourselves. So then looking at this basic outline here, we start at the very bottom, and we have a full vessel. What am I full of? I'm full of myself. I have a seed of truth, but the focus of the gospel is on me, and that represents the gospel of I. And what does that look like practically speaking? Well, I'm teaching works-based salvation, and I'm asking the question, what can I do for God? Romans 10.5, the man who does those things shall live by them. Romans 7.14, the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. And here we have kind of the idea of a glass Christian. Every time something bad happens, we wring our hands and say, God, why are you letting this happen to me. I do what's right, etc. So as we move on in the truth, then we kind of move into a state of truth mixed with error. So here we have the idea of syncretism, which is exactly what that means. We have Laodicea. Sometimes I'm in charge. Sometimes I defer to Christ as my Lord and Savior. And we also have the idea of Babylon, which is confusion. We have some doctrinal truths, but we also have some error because we still have a love of sin in our hearts. And so what does this represent as me? Well, I am cold and hot. I am a spring that brings forth fresh water, but also salt. I'm sometimes dead to self, but sometimes I am alive to self. And that state of wanting to be alive to self is why I would say that I get to bring my character to heaven with me. So let's look at the highest level that we can achieve, which is to be an empty vessel for Christ to dwell in. And the focus is not on I, but it's on heaven. It's on Christ and his righteousness. Ephesians 4.13, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 2.22, in whom you were also built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So in this phase, we are unbreakable in our faith in Jesus Christ. We receive the seal of God as part of the church of Philadelphia. Blessings to you in the name of Jesus.